I am now removing your right to complain if you are if you are still living. Yeah. But yet somehow here you friggin are. I would be afraid of leaving not only my sons, but especially my daughters with an individual who views women as a resource like this. So the feminism, the, the women, the, the, the making men weak, right? The <laughs> Oh God, somebody, somebody's fragile masculinity is showing and it's not just those bulging forehead veins. That is a, it's basically a communist state at this point. Okay. And people are basically watching North Korea be built around them okay. under extreme circumstances and they're staying there. And then they're going, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. It's like California has showed you what California is. It is time to pick when, up your children. When California tells you who she is, you should listen. <laughs> I'm and losing it here. Hello babies and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, hi, my name's David. And if you have been here before, thanks for joining me. My name is still in fact David. Now I would like to introduce you to a brand new series. This is the first video in my new series called Dismantling Hate. Unpacking Hate? What the hell is this even called? She's a super freak. So I'm so... Jesus Christ, that scared the hell out of me. Okay, you know, you've been online, you've been on the internet, you've existed as a human being uh, in this world, and you've seen hate. You've seen people being shitty. I'm just gonna say it. We are going to look at a lot of different hateful things from many different corners of the internet in the world. There are so many different hateful ideologies. We're just gonna look at things, we're gonna comment on them, we're gonna laugh together because some of the stuff you do have to laugh at, but some of the stuff you also have to look at with a really critical eye. So we're gonna sharpen our critical thinking skills, we're gonna look at some hateful things. So that's a trigger warning for you here too, Bestie, if you're not in a space to be able to see some hateful things. We're going to be talking about body image. We're going to be talking about queerness. We're going to be talking about religion. We're going to be talking about pretty much anything that somebody can be rude with. I'm not only here to provide comedic value with these videos, but I'm also here to provide a little bit of a framework that you might be able to confront some of these hateful things when you see it in real life. Because you know what, Bestie? It, it's hard. It is hard to confront people in real life. It is hard to confront people in real life about some of this stuff. So we're going to do it here together. I'm going to be practicing it right alongside you and uh, we're going to get into it. So babies, as we get into this, I would like to say that I am not going to be blurring the faces or names of any of the individuals that we are going to be looking at today when it comes to dismantling some hateful online content. This does not mean that I want you to go to the profiles of these individuals and leave them hateful comments. Please do not contribute to the culture of hate to these individuals, even though they may deserve it. Girl, I'm I'm terrified. I am right terrified, but you know what? I've had it. I've had it with people being shitty. I've had, I've had it. I've had it, I've had it officially. Is detox here? Because I've had it. I just wanna say that in preparation of me making this series and me participating in filming these videos, I have royally screwed my algorithm on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I'm getting so much alt-right QAnon nonsense garbage that has been pushed out to me, I'm gonna have to create some fake profiles so this stops infiltrating my life because sometimes I just wanna scroll on TikTok and I don't wanna read about anti-trans rhetoric when it's my personal time. That's work. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to learn about this individual called Candace Owens and she's here to destroy the LGBTQ hypocrisy. I can't friggin' wait. So a report from Wisconsin Department of Correction reveals that over 50% of male inmates identifying as transgender females in Wisconsin prisons have been convicted of at least one count of sexual assault. Okay, I'm sorry, because already I have problems with what's happening here, and I'm really gonna try and not make this that I'm stopping every eight seconds, but if you're here, you're probably interested in what I have to say, is that if we're, if there, why, there shouldn't, if you're a transgender woman, you would not be in a male prison? Like I might be wrong, but I think I, I if you're if you're a transgender woman, you're a woman, and we're gonna get into the turfs as well. Not necessarily in this, but if you don't know, that's trans exclusionary radical feminists, which means that only cis women are validated as women under this concept. And I have so many stories that I want to tell you here, but uh, yeah, you know what? I don't know if I'm gonna stop. It's just okay. It's a, the I really okay. <laughs> I'm exhausted already with the first, and it's interesting because sometimes, like you can kind of tell just by the way this individual is talking too, of like, it's the tone in their voice. 
Does anybody else hear that? Where it's like the, I don't know if it's not, like I don't want to assign like some big grand to your thing of just like, I can just emotionally suss out that this isn't a good person. But you can tell by the tone of the voice and the way that they're talking that, I don't know if it's that they don't believe what they're saying or it's like they're trying to over convince what they're saying with their tone. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I might need some extra support if these people actually come and start harassing me online. I don't so care. A report I'm, from Wisconsin Department of Correction. I don't care. I'm a strong individual. They could do whatever the hell they want. But anyway, yeah, please subscribe, like the channel if you you know that isn't even really a thing you can do. Can you like a channel? I don't know. So a report from Wisconsin Department of Correction reveals that over 50% of male inmates identifying as transgender females in Wisconsin prisons have been convicted of at least one count of sexual assault, assault or sexual abuse. Out of 161 transgender identifying male inmates, 81 of them have been convicted. Does anybody else not have a single clue what this individual just said? Like, I'm sorry, is this going to take 12 years to get through? Let's listen to this again. So a report from Wisconsin Department of Correction reveals that over 50% of male inmates... 50% I... of male inmates? Okay. So there's like a thousand. That means we're talking about 500. And I'm not breaking this down to show... Like, I'm not trying to sound stupid on purpose. Is that most people, if they don't really understand or if it doesn't make sense to them, they just immediately either believe it or just like assume the worst thing is the reason that the thing is... You know what I mean? Like, I think the ambiguity usually lends to the fear-mongering. If they were specific about what this was, it wouldn't sound as scary as the ambiguity because your imagination is usually more terrifying than reality, right? Okay, again, from the top, because how are we only eight seconds in? For the love of God. So a report from Wisconsin Department of Correction reveals that over 50% of male inmates identifying as transgender females in Wisconsin prisons have been... Okay, so out of all... Again, I'm sorry, am I stupid? So we have... Okay, wait. One more, one more. So a report from Wisconsin Department of Correction reveals that over 50% of male inmates identifying as transgender females. 50%. Okay, so 50% of the trans women in male prisons. I think it's just the way that he's saying it makes it so confusing. Or maybe I just haven't had dinner yet. I don't know. Wisconsin prisons have been convicted of at least one count of sexual assault, assault or sexual abuse out of a... Okay, so 50% of trans women, okay, no, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, Vessies. Over 50% of trans women in this specific jail or in all of Wisconsin have been convicted of a sexual assault crime? 61 transgender identifying male inmates, 80 females of Wisconsin prisons have been convicted of at least one count of sexual assault, assault or sexual abuse. Out of 161 transgender identifying male inmates, 81 of them have been convicted of such offenses, including crimes like sexual exploitation of child. <laughs> I'm sorry, this doesn't make any sense. And like, I like prove it, show it. And it's saying, like the way that he's talking is like the transgender identifying men that were females. And like, no, you can just say women. You can just say trans women if you want to sound exclusionary. And by saying like, they have been conducted of a sexual assault crime. Okay, but you have to, you have to keep in mind that this is not a random sample of transgender individuals. This is a random sample of people in prison. It's not, it's not, it's not 50% of trans people. It's 50% of trans people in prison. These people are in prison. Does that make sense? It's not that it's just trans people. These people are already in prison. I would love to know the statistics of how many people in prison are there because of these sexual assault crimes. And just because one of these crimes was against children, like, don't get me wrong. That is a sexual assault crime is horrific period. And that should not be happening to anybody. And I don't want to say that it especially shouldn't happen to children, but it especially shouldn't happen to, it shouldn't be happening to anybody. But the fact that it did happen to a child and one child is too many, that should not be happening to anybody, period. But the fact that this study or this person is saying that because one of these trans individuals allegedly per perpetrated a crime against a child it's just being used in this fear-mongering way and it's attributing that abusive nature to that person's transness when those things are not it's not causation it's not causation it just happens to be that that person is trans and also perpetuated a crime it's not it's not the causation and they're identifying male inmates 81 of them have been convicted of such offenses, including crimes like sexual exploitation of child 
rape and sexual intercourse without consent. Like, I'm sorry, but he can't be reading from an actual study because that's not how academic language sounds. It sounds like he's taking different pieces from different sentences and shoving them all together because the conjugation of these verbs just don't match. Any one of them have been convicted of such offenses, including crimes like sexual exploitation of child. Sexual exploitation of child. And sexual intercourse without consent. The oversight process. Sexual intercourse with a child against consent isn't a thing. Sexual intercourse with a child is illegal. It, it's not a matter of consent. That's statutory rape, and that exists regardless of the consent of a child, because a child cannot give consent under the law. So even that one sentence right there, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. At the Heritage Foundation obtained these records, and Director Mike Howell emphasized that men belong with men and men only in prison. He How are we putting that together now? The data stems from the Wisconsin Department of Corrections after saying the information identifies male inmates who are seeking transfers to female prisons for the reason of identifying as trans women. Out of 161 men who are in the Wisconsin Department of Corrections facilities have self-reported as being transgender. Okay, well, self-reporting. 81 have been allegedly convicted of at least one count of sexual assault or sexual abuse. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is not what that man said just a moment ago. Um, it is the first part. It might be coming, but it hasn't. this has nothing to do with children. So, okay, um, out of 161 men, 81 have been allegedly convicted of at least one count of sexual assault or sexual abuse as of late of July 2023. That's 50.3%. Again, I'm going to say, sure, that is a really high number, but that is not 50% of trans individuals in the world. That's not even 50% of the trans individuals in Wisconsin. That's 50% of the trans individuals in prison. They're already in prison. Sorry, I'm trying, and a big, you know, girl, a reason, a part of why I'm doing these videos is because the elevated heart rate that I feel right now, I don't want to feel that anymore. I'm here to condition myself up against nonsense like this. Like I literally have goosebumps right now because of the way that people misrepresent information in order to fear monger people. It's just disgusting that housing sex offender men who claim to be women with female inmates is concerning and contri- Sure, there is, de there is probably the possibility, and I'm sure it has happened in the past, is in that there would be a male identifying man, let's say a person who identifies as male, deep down in their core, is lying about being transgender so they could move to a female prison. I'm sure it happens, and I'm sure there's many reasons why somebody would choose to do that. I'm sure that it happens. But that's not, that is such a small random sample. And to be honest, if you were in prison, I just can't imagine that is a nice, fun experience. And if you had the opportunity to go out of your, if you had the opportunity to lie about something in order to make your life easier, especially if you are living your life within the environment of a prison, I don't know if I would necessarily blame that person by attempting to make their reality less harsh from the day to day, even if it involves lying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it would make sense to me my, why somebody would do that. But in reality, if we're talking about society as a whole, people aren't lying about being trans to sneak into bathrooms or to do any other malicious things. You are a malicious person first, and your gender is a, an almost completely unrelated issue from that. You're either a good person or a bad person, and the fact that you're trans has little to nothing to do with that. <laughs> the intensity that I'm hitting this face bar here. God, I mean, somebody get somebody get Mama her vivats because this is ridiculous. Moral. We're forty four seconds in. I want okay. Anyway, what do you have to say about the story? I mean, at least surprise. Okay, wait. Oh God, I heard Candace Owens' voice. We're not even a Candace Owens. Oh my God. Okay, the crimes committed have a, have reported. The crimes committed have reportedly included sexual exploitation of a child, sexual exploitation by a therapist, forced viewing of a sexual act other things that I can't say on YouTube, sexual intercourse without consent, incest, sexual intercourse with a child, indecent behavior with a child, enticing a child and more. First of all, I just want to say that the way that this is conjugated actually makes sense. And this sounds like a real sentence. And the way that that man was reading that before was definitely some like cherry picked way to make it sound more scary because he did not say it like this at all. These crimes committed, like, of course, but that is saying 
this is so ridiculous. This is actually so ridiculous and so misrepresentative of the like, or maybe it's not, it's not misrepresenting the information. It makes it sound like 50% of trans people are committing sexual crimes against children. And that is not the case. 50% of the people who, 50% of trans people who are in the Wisconsin Department of Corrections who have committed a sexual assault or sexual abuse crime, some of them reportedly included children. That's not surprising. It's not surprising that out of how many of it, 100, out of 81 people who were convicted of a sexual assault crime, it's not surprising that some of them have included children. It's not. I'm not saying that that's okay. I'm not saying that that's good. But what I'm saying is, is that this makes it sound like 50% of trans people are out here doing that. When no, this is not even 1%. And I'm not, again, 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 I'm not here saying that that is okay. That is absolutely horrific and unimaginable that this has happened to children and that is not okay. And that is not something that I agree or believe is okay and i need you to know that and i i need to be a hundred percent completely effing clear about that is that that is not okay and but that is a completely unrelated topic and conversation of abuse from transness it is not the same thing and this false equivalency here is killing me now i can't wait to see what friggin candace said no not friggin because i am here to be maintained and balanced and apparently get more gray hair so let's see what candace owens has to say about this ever. Um, I've been talking about this and there's, there's a two prong approach here. First and foremost, the advantage of a man, you commit a crime, you commit a sex crime, you molest a child and you know how they treat pedophiles in prison. You know how they treat sexual sure. deviants in prison. So you just say, actually, no, I'm transgendered. Uh, that's what's actually happening. Please put me amongst the women. And um, you know what? I'm sure that happens. I'm sure that happens. I'm sure that has happened, but that is not, that is such a small random sample of people to be placing upon an entire community. It's just a false equivalency and it's not, it's not. Also, why does it look like she's in prison right now with these boxes and the Sharpie with the keys behind? She looks like she's locked up. Mates who uh, now need to accept and the fact that the prisons are doing this. <laughs> They're acknowledging them and affirming them and that taxpayers are having to bear the expense. I can't even talk about how much that infuriates me. Um, the, but that, the that prisons are affirming trans folks? Well, our government isn't doing it, so the prisons are. Like, sure, if they're affirming people who are lying, then that's a bad thing. But affirming trans people in any way is not something that's bad. My light went out. All right, let's see what she has to say now. And element of this is that there is what's not being spoken about, what's well, definitely being spoken about my podcast, is, bet it is the growing alphabet mafia um, and how they are now adding letters that really just imply sexual deviancy. You know what I mean? Like a, a man feeling the need to put on panties, uh, a, a woman's underwear, and you're pretending that that's like a, a gender or an identity. Like perfect example, Sam Brinton, the nuclear editor. I'm sorry, we're LGBTQP, which means panty wearer? No. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. And there are, you know what? Like there are wing nuts of every kind of denomination in the world. And I'm sure somebody is out there. Like, you know what? Okay, so ABDL, adult baby diaper lovers. There are grown people who like to wear diapers and enjoy their life, their free time as a baby. We've seen the TLC things about people who like to sleep in cribs and drink from bottles. And it's just, it doesn't, why do you care? Why do you care? It's weird that you care so much about people who like to wear panties, isn't it? Unless it's actively hurting somebody else. And I'm like, here as a queer person, as a queer person in the trans community, in the queer community, that's not something that's being taken seriously by the, by, by people as a gender identity. Your gender identity is not the activity of putting on panties, of putting on diapers. That's not, that's, that's not something that people identify with as part of their gender, as, as a whole that's not representative of the entire community so it's like it, it again it's a form of discrimination it's looking at the behavior of one individual and assigning that behavior to an entire group of people who have nothing to do with that other than their gender identity their queerness their this their that what is she about to say about this person and feeling the need to put on panties, uh, a woman's underwear, and you're pretending that that's like uh, a gender or an identity. Perfect example, Sam Brinton, the nuclear energy the White guy, House. Yeah. 
person who literally was open about the fact that he was a sexual deviant. I mean, yep. Wearing heels, lipsticks, into pup play, which if you look- Sam Brenton. Okay, I'll bite. I'll bite, bestie. Sam Brenton, who is that? Okay, so Sam Brenton- Oh, there's the Wikipedia page. Okay, not that we can unequivocally trust Wikipedia, but we're gonna read the Wikipedia page about Sam Brenton and see what's going on here. Okay is an American nuclear engineer and queer activist. They served as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Spent Fuel and Waste Disposition in the Office of Nuclear Energy from June to December of 2022. Brinton is no longer employed in the Office of Nuclear Energy after being charged with luggage theft on three separate occasions. Luggage theft. I wonder if that, like, luggage luggage? Like, luggage you take on a flight for a trip? Interesting. Brinton gained media attention in 2010 for their reported experience of conversion therapy, later later testifying at the United Nations on the subject in 2014. The gay activist Wayne Besson was skeptical about their account, noting that Brinton had claimed to have experienced electroshock therapy, which had not been used for decades, and other alleged inconsistencies. Brinton was the first openly gender-fluid individual in federal government leadership, work diva, and uses singular they pronouns. Great. So I don't really understand. So sure, there's like, like again, This is kind of that discriminatory piece that I was just talking about, right? Sure, Sam Brinton was arrested, or what was it? Luggage theft? Luggage theft? Where is it? Why can't my eyes find that? Mm. Was being, after being charged with luggage theft on three separate occasions. Like, okay, luggage theft isn't okay, but that you can't take some, you can't take a crime that somebody has done and assign that not only their whole personality, but then attribute that to the personality of queer people as a whole. Sam Brent, I didn't even know this individual. They don't represent the, the LGBTQ, the alphabet mafia as a whole. That's not, that's not how this works. What about like, they were a nuclear engineer. Do you know how much time it takes to become a nuclear engineer? Probably like four years. Why aren't we identifying Sam Brinton as a nuclear engineer when that took so much longer than it took to steal four bags? Like, I'm sorry, three bags, allegedly. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's just the fact that this individual that you're perceiving as masculine is wearing lipstick, and then all of a sudden that's so upsetting to you. If I had experienced conversion therapy in childhood, I'd be stealing more than luggage. And that's not to say that, like, I don't want that to sound reductionist, but the the mental pressures that exist on somebody going through conversion therapy, just being a queer person, period, is so tolling on the psyche. (sighs) Okay, Candace, what do you got? To what pup play actually is, you will be shocked at how disgusting it is. Um, You know, I don't think I'm that shocked. Pup play, you just, you put on a mask and you pretend you're a dog. Like, sure, there's a sexual, there can be a sexual nature to it. You have a tail, you have a, you're a furry, you're, I don't know. It's just, it's not, it's not that deep. It's just people dressing up as animals. It's not that deep and it's also not that new either. That has existed for a long time. Well before the questioning of queer people's rights has come into play. It's only been in the last 60, anyway, we're not, no. Leash. And still have a job. You know, you used to be fearful that if they- You can't put, I can't, why can't I have, what? You, so you're, okay. <laughs> so Candace Owens think that if I put my boyfriend on a leash, he can't have a job? <sighs> like, I'm sorry, and I get it. No, I don't. But I think I can understand, I can have a little sliver of understanding of saying like, something that you perceive to be a sexual transgression or something that's an indiscretion or something that you deem to be inappropriate should preclude you from having employment. It's like having face tattoos or something like that. But it just ultimately, that is contributing to the structure of the world where saying everybody needs to be the same. And again, like I feel like I need to say this every eight minutes here is that if it contributes to the negative effects of anybody, anybody, but the fact, like the fact that somebody is into pup play or the fact that somebody likes to put on a costume and pretend they're a tiger, why does that hurt you? And I actually think that you're kind of the weird one if you're sitting here on this podcast talking about people who want to to, to engage in pup play. It is not that serious. It's not that deep. And I think you're actually a little bit of the creep here of how much you're focusing on it. If it's not hurting anybody else, get over it. You and you'd find this stuff online. Your employer, you couldn't get hired. No. This guy got right. You, <laughs> oh, this guy. That used to oh, be a that, that used to be a disqualifier. They use they them pronouns, not this guy. Anyway. You yeah. could find somebody naked in straps and into pup play. Sam Britton just 
outwardly, I am a freak and fly my freak high, gets the job at What's the White What's his job? House. He was a nuclear... He was the nu- head, head of nuclear waste in the energy department. I gotta go. No, I, I, I promise you. I promise you. And then guess what happened? He's a club dog. He got arrested for three stealing. times for stealing women's panties at freaking at airports. Airport. That guy? Yes. Yeah, that, I, I don't know if we actually... I don't know if we actually have proof that that's the reason that this individual was stealing the luggage. Um, but if... I, I can't imagine that they, well, I like, we don't know that that's the reason that they were doing that. But honestly, I, it's just the fact that they were a nuclear engineer, the fact that they were a nuclear engineer, and then the fact that they were into pup play, that's not surprising to me. Do you know how many people who are in power who have, that do horrific things behind closed doors? You would be amazed and shocked and disgusted at the habits of so many high powerful people in our world. And the fact that this individual, I already forgot their name, the fact that this individual put it online shouldn't represent the fact that there's so much worse because they published it. Maybe they just got found out faster, right? But if we're looking at other things, nope, we're not getting into the Catholicism of it all. That's gonna be a different episode. <laughs> I just one pair. Oh, oh, okay, this is case. Well, I'm calling other, BS, Ken. Better. A guy like that would never do no, something like this, Ken. What are you talking about? They, they, I'm shocked right now. I told you right I'm now. a freak, and then I did some freaky things, right? And that's what's happening right now yeah. in this so, this climate of... Not- like, I'm sorry, but weren't we talking about transgender individuals in Wisconsin Department of Corrections allegedly engaging in sexual assault against children? Why are we talking about now a nuclear engineer who's stealing panties at the airport? Do you see how we're kind of just like, oh, look how shocking this is. And then this person wearing lipstick is stealing panties. And then it's actually not connected. The only through line here is slandering trans folks. Next. Binary, I'm a man, but I want to wear women's underwear before. They're telling you that something is wrong. Ooh, she said they. Ooh, progressive queen. They are saying, I am flying my freak flag high. And then we're non binary all- ex Biden official Sam Brinton was on secret taxpayer funded trip at time of luggage theft. I, I kind of love that. That's kind of slay, honestly. Um, and uh, no, I like, and me saying that, like, okay, let me unpack the reason why I said that is slay just now is that you're on a taxpayer funded thing at the time you're doing something that's illegal. I can't imagine people in government taking advantage of taxpayer funded things. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. It happens in my province. It happens in my country. It probably happens in your province and country too. It happens all the time. So the fact that this is a queer person taking advantage of the government, great. I support queer rights and queer wrongs. I support women's rights and women's wrongs. Maybe not Candace Owens' women's wrongs, however shock when they do something that's sexually deviant and, yeah. and that it's mind-boggling to me it's why i am that it is an issue that i care passionately about i am a mother to you yeah you sound passionate what is what i wonder what the definition of sexual deviancy is like is engaging in same sex sex sexually deviant my god that was a mouthful children why does a drag queen want access to a child can anybody, can anybody answer that big question okay you're a man okay i'm a drag queen I don't want access to a child. I don't care about access to a child. Actually, the reason that that people associate this is because a lot of parents want to bring their children to inclusive events, especially queer children, to these drag events. Because, oh, I I read this online, but if I was a parent, and one day I will be, that's something I'm interested in doing. I do want a kid, maybe two, don't, doesn't matter. If I had to choose between leaving my child in a room full of 50 drag queens or 50 heterosexual cisgender white men, I'm choosing the drag queens 100% of the time. You show me in history where all of these sexual indiscretions against children have taken place against or perpetrated by drag queens. You show me where all of these drag queens are hurting children. Show me. Give me a name. Give me names. Do you know how many names I could put on the list of of white men doing that to children? I I said we're not going to get into the Catholic Church of it all, but it's just she's really shoving me there, isn't she? Drag queens don't care about children. In fact, most drag queens hate children. (laughs) It's even worse now because of all of this, like, anti-drag, anti-gay, anti-trans, like, keep the children safe. Because now children almost serve as, like, a trigger for drag people of, like, oh, God, like, I can't, I have to make sure I'm being appropriate. And I have to make sure that I'm not being seen as, I don't know, it's just... 
God. When I was in LA a few weeks ago, I uh, I was in full drag at this Oscars event that I went to. And there was a, because it was, it was at Paramount Studios, Universal Studios, I don't know. But it was near where there were a lot of people like vacationing and there were a lot of families, right? And they were kind of passing through this like thoroughfare of pedestrianism, you get it. And uh, there was one. <laughs> It's so funny because there was one, there would be families that would come through and you could tell like who was queer friendly and who was not because some people would walk by and like the kids would like look at me as a person fully in drag and they'd be like, wow, look at all the glitter or like something like that. Cause I, I look stunning and gorgeous. But, um, and then there was a family that walked by and there was a dad that took his hands and covered the eyes of his child as they walked by me, which I honestly thought was kind of hilarious in the moment because it's really campy, but also like, is it that serious? I don't think it's that serious. I'm somebody with a beard and heels. It's not, it's not, tell me you don't have a personality without telling me you don't have pers a personality. It's not that serious. It's not that deep. Drag queens don't give a shit about your kids. I'm sorry, they don't. And you like to dress up as a woman and go to nightclubs. Yes, okay? I do. Flying your free flag high. Now you're demanding access to read books to children? Does mm, that no, but you can, you can understand the duality of a human being and that what you're doing in a nightclub that is an 18 plus venue is not the same thing that you would be doing in a child friendly library at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning reading a book like how to be a real man this book I would read to children and in fact I have read to children not in drag but I would love to read that story to children in drag in a child friendly way but to be honest, even when I'm in an 18 plus venue, I'm not really doing anything that's inappropriate, but it's just the venue because people are drinking and it's a nightclub and it's entertainment and it's, it's different. Children shouldn't be there. But can't you understand a reality where somebody can exist in two different ways for two different audiences? It's called code switching. And Candace Owens, I believe you're doing an incredible amount of that around all of these men. Mm -hmm. Not just do we, do, do, can we just pass the sniff test, guys? Huh? Yeah. And what? Women, women out there. What? <laughs> what? Can we pass the sniff test? I have no idea what that means. We got to go back. Sorry, what? Huh? Sorry. To read what? books to children? Hmm. Does that not just do we do, do, can we just pass the sniff test, guys? Yeah. You know? And then you have I women, women, women the out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's you know, it's really interesting. We're here. That's We're queer. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Do you get it? Let me know in the comments. What the hell does that mean? Can we just pass the sniff test, guys? Yeah. You know? And then you have I don't want to start saying that with my friends colloquially. Uh, can we pass the sniff test, guys? I don't know what that means. And then the other guy continues on to say, I wouldn't want to sniff this person. Which, okay. Like, can somebody call me when the comedy gets here? Because I think that's what they're attempting to do. It's just not funny. It doesn't Women sniff out test there. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's you know it's really interesting. We're here. That's we're queer. <laughs> we're coming for we're your children. children. You've yeah. heard this before. Yes. Let's all say it in Let's, unison, guys. Yeah. Right? I mean, and the, it's and scary. And, Ken, and here's my. We're thing, here. Like, we're queer. We're coming for your children. No queer person has ever said that in, uh, in in an intentional way. Nobody is coming for your kids. It's all right. It's alt-right knuckleheads who say that kind of stuff. No queer people are coming for your children. I'm sorry. And you like, it's a, there's a lot more strict. There's a there's a lot more heteronormative people who are coming for your children. Sorry, it's just from a mathematical standpoint. If 90% of the world is not queer, is it, hell even if 70% of the world is not queer, it's just an inherently more heteronormative people are coming for your children than queer people. For instance, like, like, you know, I, we have everybody here has freaking gay friends. I have gay family members. When it comes to yeah, like, I have freaking gay friends and freaking gay family members. Sure. A month and everything. It's like, could you talk about the oh the sexuality of it? It's like, when is it ever cool? Name another month or a day or a moment where it's cool for any group to walk outside butt naked, yeah. g-string. And I get that there's kids, like people are bringing their kids, which I think they should, you know, go to jail. But when is it ever cool for you to be in a bike butt naked? Yeah. How, how is that? Literally, how is that? if it I just, said, hey. well, okay. So there's the delineation between two kinds of events here, right? Because I I do believe that there there is and that there should maintain to be the separation of of those kinds of events from ones that have children involved in them like pride can involve children 
there are children that are queer. And when I say queer, it's not necessarily, uh, necessarily. <laughs> okay, no, okay, this is a really, okay, here's a time for queer lessons with David. Because sometimes people confuse that gender identity and sexual orientation when they are in fact not the same thing. Gender identity is deep down who you feel you are, either man, woman, if you're dealing in the false binary of gender, maybe you're non-binary, hi, it's me. Maybe you feel like you oscillate between expressions of masculinity and femininity, or maybe you're somewhere in the middle and you maintain that spot or you have more fluidity as day goes as as time moves on whatever it doesn't matter gender is a construct it, it doesn't make sense it's not real although it is real for a lot of people but sexual identity is who you are attracted to who you are attracted to and your gender identity are not the same thing and they don't have to relate and they can stay the same or change at different rates and different levels right it's it's, it's not the same thing so Yes, I do agree here that children should not be involved in events that have a sexual nature to them. And I'm not, okay, so what I'm not saying here is I don't think children should be around like people on G-strings on bikes like this. You're inherently saying that the human body is sexual when in fact the human body is not inherently sexual right like growing up in a house like growing up with in a family and like there's a parent who doesn't have clothes on because they're showering and like there's just a kid who's around you can't tell me that's inherently sexual you are assigning sexuality to these people who are not necessarily exhibiting those traits because you want them to make because you want to paint them as sexual deviants when it's in fact not the same thing. I think maybe sometimes people see videos of like Folsom Days or the Folsom Fair, which is like a sex and kink outdoor fair that happens every year. And these things happen all over the world. And it's not just queer events. Straight events happen like that too. Straight people are just as weird and kinky and sexually deviant and fly their freak flags as much as queer people. And it's not being reported at the same frequency, which is what is upsetting here and is really the hypocrisy of this whole entire video but i think the thing is is that you can't inherently assign, assign sexuality to a human body it's just it's just not right it, it doesn't make sense and it, it's not logical look at the look at this guy's really he's really upset like i have that vein right here too maybe every person does and that's really popping out there guys tomorrow's family day okay we're gonna have a family parade and yep. we're gonna celebrate families no person is showing up butt naked, right? It's, it's no, no family showing up. So well, you don't know there's Tom, something Tom. I've been to a lot of Pride events and nobody was there naked. Yeah, just like full stop. It's just not, doesn't really happen like that. And uh, you don't need a family to like, like, sure, okay, family day, have a family parade. Awesome. I'm sure that's happened. I'm sure that exists. Whatever, good for you, go for it. But I just, for family day in particular, Family day isn't necessary in the same way that pride is necessary because families haven't been discriminated against. It's not like it was illegal to be part of a family until 50 years ago. It's just not the same thing. <laughs> How are we four minutes into this? <laughs> And naked, get on a bicycle, get, you know, the men that were on bicycles, literally naked, right? But for some reason, when you say it's an LGBTQ pride parade, you know you're going to see nudity. What, what does that tell you? And people are fearful to talk about this. And it's it's crazy to me as a parent that we've allowed this to go so far, that we've allowed sex. Then don't bring your kids to pride. I don't think pride is inherently for kids. I don't. I don't. Those kids, when they grow up, are going to need pride because they continue to have this discrimination placed upon them. But I don't think pride is for kids. I think your kids will be just friggin' fine if you leave them home for pride. Don't bring Deviancy them then. to be perceived as an identity, you know, as, you know, something that needs to be treated. Deviancy is not identity. It's just not. Like, in this way, I would agree. Deviancy is not identity. And But that's not what queer people are saying. This one naked guy on a bike really triggered Miss Candle. Like, she can't get it out of her head. She cannot let this one go. And you know what? If I if I saw a make, naked man on a tricycle, she didn't say tricycle. I don't know why I'm thinking tricycle. Maybe that's because it makes it more upsetting. <laughs> Ooh, that would... Nope, not saying that. Loved. And who are the people behind saying we have a lot of women? It's always women. Why don't why do women not see the ridiculousness? And why aren't the women speaking out more about trans men in sports? Like why don't it, well because those women are, aren't uh, those are feminists. Those are the Chelsea Handlers, right? And so that that's a whole different simulation. It's Ch shout out to Chelsea Handler. I do love her. She's great. Yeah. The moms at home are not the ones yeah. that are pushing that. You what know? percentage of women under thirty, best guess, do you think fall into that type of ideology? No. Like feminist? Yeah. 
Like, the, they love Chelsea Handler. They're cool with this. They're cool with men being in sports. Difference if you're talking, like, early 20s versus end of 20s. I'm saying, I'm saying Gen Z. Let's talk about that. 25 and under. That's the future. Mm -hmm. This is who we're trying to convince not to go down this path. Uh... You, you want a percentage? I, that's what I'm getting. Sure. Well, I know that you've highlighted the... Yeah. So this overall conversation about trans women in sports and people perceiving that trans women have like a biological advantage over cis women in sports. I've actually had this full conversation on my channel before. It's in a video called, Is Danielle Smith Transphobic? If you're not from Alberta, Dan Danielle Smith is the premier of Alberta here in my province of Alberta, Canada. And um, she did propose a piece of legislation attempting to keep trans women out of sports, purporting that they have a biological advantage over trans, over cis women. But as somebody who has studied neuroscience on a master's level, I can tell you that it is the effect of hormones on the human body that effectively changes the biological nature of each individual. It is not the fact that you were assigned male at birth. It is the fact that you are taking estrogen it is the these biological things in your body change when you take the hormones i'm not explaining it super well here so if you're interested in the full explanation i i, I gave go go ahead and watch there but i would say like again where are these cis women who are being tackled off soccer fields by drag queens it's just it's it's what they're making this sound like and it's just not the reality who cares is it really that deep do you have nothing else good going on in your life that you have to label people down to just these such small idiosyncratic things in order to exclude them? Do you really have to go so far out of your way to make people not feel welcome on something as arbitrary as gender? <sighs> Percent of Gen Z identifies LGBT. I, it, but I mean, look, look here's, a, here's a mayor in Burbank. Can't he's wait. an Armenian mayor. Okay, this guy. In, in the classroom, he's having this guy yes. spank him. Check this out. This is the Burbank? <laughs> this is the Burbank mayor. The, the music mic. I don't think... That doesn't look like a classroom. That, and, and in fact, I can almost, with 100% certainty, not 100, with 99% certainty, say that's not a classroom. That looks like a banquet hall because no classroom has round tables like that. And if they did, they don't have those like... They don't have table covers. What the hell is that called? They don't have tablecloths on round tables like that in classrooms. And I'm sure spanking happens, and the fact that the <laughs> the mayor of Burbank, if this is like Burbank in, in California, like really close to, to Los Angeles, I think that's actually hilarious, and I kind of want to move to Burbank now. But it, it's not that deep. It is not that deep. The fact that he's getting spanked has nothing to do with his ability to govern a town. <sighs> That's the Burbank what? mayor that's doing this. Pride, what? proud, love yeah. is love. I mean, just, she's, pro she's a strong warrior. And he's like, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. Some of the craziest tweets came out about this guy, which is absolutely wild when you see the, the GUSD folks posted his uh, tweets. Oh, my God. Constantine Anthony out of Burbank doing this. By the way, uh, here's Oklahoma elementary. I can't wait. Again, it's just, are we talking about trans people in sports? Are we talking about trans people in jail purporting things again? Like, what is the actual topic here? Just being shitty to trans people and kind of cherry picking and weaving all of these small little clips of, of people, but not even trans people. It's just queerness in general, because there's nothing to say that that queen or the mayor of Burbank is trans or a sexual deviant. Like, what if they were funding and raising money? Like, I don't know. If the mayor of my town said that if everybody, like, if we raise $10,000 for a good cause, I'll get spanked by a drag queen on stage. I'd go see that. Absolutely, I would. That's hilarious. That it's not there in like a sexual nature. It would just be a fun thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's not that weird. It's not that deep. Well, faces calls for a firing a drag queen principal. The principal in Oklahoma is a. I've drag been out of the classroom. I've been out of teaching for a hot minute. But ooh, I would run back. I would run to the application page if I had a drag queen principal. Love that. Love that. Queen, can you please pull this up picture for us? Pull this picture up for us to see it. It's the drag so, queen. Calls to fire drag queen principal Shane Mernon, yeah. also known as Chantel Mandalay. Yeah, yes. as a as a as a drag queen. As a drag, which but is then scary. also pr previously was arrested on child porn. Oh, Twenty years ago. Tw yep. Yeah, and, and, yep. Got, and basically got away with it because of a technicality. I looked into this case. Okay, so. That's horrific. That's horrendous. We're not arguing against that. It's not okay. It is illegal. It should be illegal, and people should face dire consequences for engaging in things like that. I'm not arguing against that. I, I fully agree that the law should have consequences for people that engage in things like that. I'm not saying the name specifically because I don't want to be demonetized. However, 
We cannot equate that individual with queerness as a whole. The fact that they are a drag queen has nothing to do that they engaged in that kind of poor behavior. And it's, it's a logical fallacy to say that all people are like that because of this one individual. Technicality because they found what was clear to one judge and another judge was child porn, but then when they brought the trial forth, they couldn't identify the child. And so basically they were like, you can't prove this is actually a child, right? So they had to drop, Stop. I swear, yes. because you have to be able to prove. So if I say that this is a child, even if it's abundantly clear to all of us this is a child, you have to be able to prove that, right? So it was clear enough that they arrested, they arrested him. It was clear enough that a judge said this arrest holds, and then another judge said, you actually have to be able to say who that child, like we have to be able to say that person is actually a minor. And they weren't able to do this. So the charges got dropped on a technicality. Right. Well, you have to be able to identify that that individual is a minor so you don't accidentally incarcerate somebody because then that's just going off of your your instinct or your insight. Like just by saying that that person looks young shouldn't be enough to actually indict somebody on those charges because age is I, I, like it just you can't go off of looks when it's something that's serious. You need to actually dot your I's and cross your T's because it you can't if you can't prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. Like again, I'm not saying that that kind of behavior is okay or acceptable in any way, shape, or form, but it's it's not it's not a representation of queer people. It, this is a court case. It's not it has nothing to do with the fact that they're queer or a principal or a drag queen. Cases of indiscretions like this should be handled with a level of severity, irrespective of everything else that that person has going on in their life. Okay. He gets this expunged from his record, and then he somehow gets voted in a private ceremony. The the, the they came together, no parents were there, and they they made him principal. Years, twenty years later, Child, arrested for child porn Born charges. Odyssey. Yeah. What and, city in Oklahoma? Because if this goes down in, in front of children, if this goes down in LA, know? San Francisco, no. and okay. yeah. drag that, Oklahoma, and, and, can you show the photo? Can, can we just all be completely honest? And all the viewers out there, look how scary drag queens are. Like, like some people have like a clown phobia. Look how scary that guy is right there. Yeah. Look at look. Zoom in on the guy on the right. What that looks like? Like the penguin from There's from Batman. There's worse pictures, by the way. Those, yeah. yeah, but they're scary. Like it's scary. Yeah, you're not attractive. Somebody who was arrested for child pornography. I just can't imagine. Like it's just discriminatory saying that somebody looks scary based off of their looks like that it's just not it's not appropriate demanding access to elementary school children and they're, and they're cool with it. it's just saying demanding access it's just it, it's it's fear-mongering language it's used that way for a reason cool but i don't think i don't think anymore because nah, the story got exposed cool and now no not the, oklahoma if you don't know if you know this is actually the reddest state in the union oh really yeah, yeah west so, virginia oklahoma yeah, alabama Oklahoma's those three. number one the most the most the reddest is state it? in the union is boomer oklahoma. sooners but pat what you in la there's a story about uh california uh, read it so in California, um, Sheridan, been... California passes bill punishing parents who don't affirm Tom, such a trans side. kids in up. custody battles. Okay, so if you don't affirm kids in custody battles, uh, Elon called it other madness. California State Assembly passed AB 957, which mandates that judges in child custody cases consider whether a parent has affirmed a child's transgender identity. An amendment in June broadened the requirement stating the, that the... So yeah, they're saying that it, it would... <laughs> This is just saying that if we're looking at a custody case, you being affirming to your child, you listening to your child, you doing, you, you listening to your child should be, ah, uh, just. Parents must affirm their child's gender identity to be deemed suitable, okay, for the child's welfare in court to win. Yeah, because if you're not affirming your child's gender, you are not a suitable guardian. You know what? There I said it. <laughs> um, critics like Elon Musk, we know what happened with one of his billion children. Um, strongly criticized the bill. Must with one of his, his with one of his billion children. What the hell does that even mean? This and warned it could jeopardize parental custody if parents disagree. Yeah, because I want to take my political advice from Elon Musk. That makes sense. I just remember him taking that metal ball and throwing it at the window of the Cybertruck, and him being like, "It's not gonna break," and then he throws it, and it immediately breaks. Oh my fucking god! So good, love it. Yeah, he's the one who I want to take advice from. The child's transgender identity. So now California is like doesn't have to be. It's not transgender identity. It's identity. Penalizing people if they don't affirm a kid's transgender transition. Have you good. seen? Good. Yeah, I'm familiar with this. And, and what I've said is that I've stopped being outraged at California stories. It's like to me, it's like if you're still a parent and you're raising your kid in California, outside of like you quite literally have no money and cannot leave the state. I I, I can't sympathize with you anymore. I mean, I, I can't. I literally can't sympathize anymore. It's gotten. If you live in California and you're rich, what are you even doing there? <laughs> like I can't. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. I just, what the hell?
so crazy there. The, the policies that they're putting forth that they're able to push through, they're telling you, I mean, that is a, it's basically a communist state at this point. Okay. And people are basically watching North Korea be built around them. Okay. Under extreme circumstances. And they're staying there. And then they're going, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. It's like California has showed you what California is. It is time to pick when, up your children. When California tells you who she is, you should listen. <laughs> I'm and losing it here. The state owns your children already in a, in a variety of you, different ways. You, shut they're up. There. It, it, it doesn't, it's ending with transgenderism. This has been going on for a very very long time. You saw this with COVID. They, they want to put shots in your child's arm. You have no rights. Oh, not touching that. But it does it does make sense that that's what she thinks. And you know what? That does with, lift a weight off of me because if she's an anti-vaxxer, it would only make sense that she's a... a okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, see, I see you, girl. California. So I am now removing your right to complain if you are, if you are still living. Yeah. But yet somehow here you friggin' are. State of California. But you can also ski and surf on the same day. Yeah. That's, I, I love how so. people complain about everything here when it comes to Cali. Is the comedy in the room? And they're just like, yeah, but the weather. I'm like, it's not worth it. Yeah. I'm going to sweat my ass The off weather here. in North Korea is just you know wonderful. I mean? yeah, like, <laughs> the weather in North Korea is wonderful. I just, I just, is the, is, is the comedy in the room with us? Like, these people don't understand comedy. North Korea? Oh, you have Pyongyang? Seen the you haven't been to Pyongyang this summer. Have, have you, you seen a North Korean yeah. sunset? Oh yeah. my god. I, <laughs> I haven't. Pyongyang and that summer. So, so, so here's my question to kind of wrap up all the, so the feminism, the, the women, the, the, the making men weak, right? The. the <laughs> Oh God! Somebody, somebody's fragile masculinity is showing, and it's not just those bulging forehead veins. After the kids, the trans thing, they're going up. Like, is it a concerted effort by like when you hear like the Klaus and and uh, the the Klaus? Sorry, I'm not. I shouldn't be attacking the individual things about these people and their characters. It's really hard. I'm sorry. It's where they're like, listen, overpopulation is 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 the biggest problem. Is it an accident or are these guys just openly telling us? Because all those people that we talked about, they're not having children. Yeah. The trans. Do you know what I mean? The 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 weak trans people have kids. Trans people have kids. I know trans people with kids. And they don't want to have kids anymore. The, the feminists are like, we don't need men. Is it by accident or is it an effort to really slow down the, the, the population? Like, is it, a, is it a deeper thing? Well, if overpopulation is a problem, then shouldn't you be happy that these people aren't having kids? Make it make sense, Vesti. I don't get it. America's at war. Mm -hmm. I think America's at war. I think that people always thought World War Three would be something like World War Two. People would be dropping nukes, and no, I think it's it's a silent war. It's an ideological. Yeah, people aren't dropping nukes; they're dropping trans folks. Good God! Um, I believe that there is a globalized effort to take down America from within, and people realizing after years, China is a huge part of this effort. <laughs> take over America without firing a single bu single bullet, and it'd be. It begins oh, so it's China. China is the reason that trans people are awful. What? Culture, and that's why I believe that culture is the biggest battle that we're facing right now. So, yeah, it is, but not for the reasons you think. I don't think. Uh, uh, by the way, I think that 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 fight, uh, the feminist fight, is is coming to an end yeah. because the Thank product God. is showing common sense is winning, and data. Is no, I just what. I think maybe, like, common sense is winning. That doesn't make any sense. But also, like, I think maybe... I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what he's thinking. But if we actually look at the numbers, like, feminism is... Um, it's on the rise. It's on the rise. Like, feminism doesn't make men weak. Feminism raises everybody. <sighs> Proving that this is not working. It is working. It is working. 60-year-old women right now talking about the biggest mistake they made is buying into being a feminist. They can no longer have kids. They wish they were married. They wish they would have done this. Guys, I it's, wish you were right. I really do. But I spend probably more time than anyone here with women under 30. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I say, guys, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? I don't know what this individual does, but that, that kind of red is weird just now. Did these 25 and under women, they, they are so far gone. And that's the future. I wish and they're some of the most happiest people that I know, Bestie, honestly. Right. You know, you know what it is for for you to say that. You also contribute towards it though, because think about you're it. blaming me. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not blaming Sorry, you. Lady. No, no, yes, I'm not. Tell me. I'm not blaming you. There's an element of it that even, you know, whatever you want to change, you have to look at it in a different way and not capitalize off what's out there. You have to eventually. When I was, all I did was women from you know 14 to 25 that was my number one priority and i'm like listen that's all I what the hell is he even talking about does anybody know he doesn't know i do 26 times a year i'm in vegas i was a four hour drive away from vegas in <laughs> vegas the opportunity for prospecting was priceless on what it was this is pre tinder days i have no clue what it is to swipe right you have to actually go talk and prospect like that was work is he talking does dating equate to prospect for him what 
God. Oh, we have less than a minute. Thank God. It takes work of going in and networking and meeting Spending money and a friend and this and then eventually to go versus today it's a DM. Boom. You're working your numbers, 100 messages. Boom. Let's go six o'clock. Then you got one at eight. Then you got one at 10. I don't know. That's the way that he's talking about women is like dating women and what I believe he's probably sleeping with them in this thing is like viewing women as a resource, which is a part of this whole conversation as well. And if you look at women as a resource, it, it just really shows that he's part of the problem here. It's a completely different ballgame. <laughs> as if we didn't know that, but it, it's where his ideology is, so it makes sense. Also, an element of, you know, us as... Like, we okay, if we're talking about being afraid of leaving your children with drag queens, I would be afraid of leaving not only my sons, but especially my daughters with an individual who views women as a resource like this. We need to also kind of challenge the status quo and tell them we're not attracted to this. This is not attractive anymore, right? I don't know what you're doing. You think this is attractive? We're also not turned on by this. I think the world, people, why the world isn't built to attract people like you. Why do you think people are out here attempting to attract people like you? Nobody cares about you, sir. And also play a role in that, but that's a whole different conversation. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast. I didn't like it, but I do believe I, in fact, will watch another one. So, babes, if you made it to the end here, thank you so much. This is going to be a long friggin' video. But thank you so much for watching my first official video of Unpack... What is this called? Yes, yeah, sorry. It's my first... Sorry, I'm still learning. <laughs> thank you for watching my first installment of Dismantling Hate. I've been your host, David Day. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I don't know. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm doing all kinds of things in all kinds of places. And you know what? Uh, make sure you, you give me some support here because these people might be coming after me with this. Uh, I, don't, I don't think they will. Like I said, I'm a strong individual who can handle anything, basically. And I, I do know that I'm on the right side of history just because I am, in fact, uh, a nice person who is affirming to people. And if it's not affecting me or negatively affecting those around them, I think people can do whatever the hell that they want. If you are watching this soon after I posted it, I won't have a playlist of other videos for you to watch like this. I do have all kinds of other content on my channel here, but uh, if you are watching this, I don't know, a, a week after I publish this one, then there's definitely going to be another video there. So uh, go through there and binge those. And thank you so much for joining me, babes. Uh, I think you have the power to do whatever you want in this world, as long as it's not hurting others. And make sure that in those moments, if you feel comfortable to say something to those homophobic, transphobic people in the wild, give it a go. Give it a go. Thank you so much for joining. And until next time, goodbye. Oh my fucking god.